gentlemen, it's been a great year fixing bikes and it's almost over. That's right, Calvin. It'll be nice to take a break for the holiday. Just kind of hang out at home, break from the shop. Yep, no bottom brackets to service, no mystery diagnosis. Nobody bringing their bikes in with weird symptoms. Nothing to grease or adjust. We really won't be doing much bike work at all. Calvin here, Park Tool. Pat! It's Pat. Is it here? They have a bike. It's in a box. It's in the box. You need someone to put it together? They need someone to put it together. You have an hour? Can we do this in an hour? Yeah, let's go. We'll be right up. Truman, Pat finally dropped the bike off. Finally. Well, it's a gift. Time, it's right? a gift, you know, so we got to put it together right, but we got to do it quick, man. All right, well, let's get to it. Box open. All right. Oh, that's the sound of a new that bike. A good one. That glue. Uh, yep. I hope it comes. Tilt this thing and dump it upside down. Yeah, let's take a look at what we've got here before we pull it out of the box. Looks like we got wheels and, and, and uh, bars down there and a stem. It's all padded. That's nice. But it seems we can't... to be in relatively good condition. It does. It hasn't been no damaged dents, in the no box. Scratches. We've got to grab something. And what we want to grab is the seat post. So we're actually going to sneak in here. There we are. Comes a papa. Aha. Mm. Well, that's comfortable. Yeah. So oh, it looks wow. like we got some pack. Well, this is our first bit of packaging that's coming out. That's right. So you, at this point, figure out what you want to do with the packaging. Recycle it, reuse it. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Yeah. And we're going to pile this and we're going to put it with our paper product. I'm going to put the paper over here for now and then we can put all the mm -hmm. paper products back in the box. Can you hand me the cross tip? I'm going to move this reflector up. Do we want to keep the reflector? Do you think Pat would want the reflector? Well, nighttime riding, is it a safety thing or should you be riding at night? If you are riding at night, you really should have lights. Blinky uh, lights, your big bike. bright lights. Even That's during right. the day, they're starting to design lights to be uh, for daytime use. Yes, yes. Now, what did, what did you, what'd you do? You just tighten that. I just tighten this. I like to make sure things are tight before oh, they start going together. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you don't have so that even if you didn't go back and tighten it, mm -hmm. it's already tight. So you don't Remember, have to worry about it. Much of what is done on an assembly, you're adjusting and assembling it. Parts are often attached to the bike. It doesn't mean they're properly tight. Exactly. So. You're, you, this is now your responsibility. Anything that's already been done by somebody else, you're almost going to check all of it over again. That's going to blame us. Exactly. So we want this right. So right. we have a dry post, we have a dry frame. So here, a nice little trick. We're gonna actually grease inside. So we grease inside because if we put it on the outside of this tube, a lot of wood would get wicked off before mm -hmm. it went into the tube. It would be messier. There's gonna be some excess, but it's gonna be down inside. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna see it, so we're not gonna care. Yeah, and more grease a little bit further down, maybe towards sure. the end of the post Let's is pretty do it beneficial. Now, just a bit, and he's going to leave us plenty of room to grab. Yeah. We're not saying this is where they want the saddle. No, I'm just going to tighten it up just a little bit more. Mm. Oh, see? That one's tight. That one's tight, and this is fun. We left it crooked. I like it because we got to lower it and straighten it. You'll have to go back down and so we'll have another reminder down the, okay. down the process Hold here. On. Let's bring her on over. Well, we could just lift it out of the box. Truman Shirley, what are we, weak? How, how is that we, possible? We're resourceful, Calvin. That makes the whole thing worth it right there. Oh, yeah. Nice. We're free and clear. Oh, we've got... Paper product? Got paper product? Paper put product, we're going product here. Box. But no plastic. We will not put the plastic in here. We'll find another place. Important, there is 
typically a box inside the box that will have the pedals. Small parts. Small parts that you might need. This one feels like mostly pedals. Yeah. All right. In the box, pedals. Quick release. Now, a typical bike packed up, lots of foam, lots of paddings, lots of things uh, strapped to each other. It's gonna have to come off. Mm -hmm. Yep. And a critical one to get off is the wheel. Let's get this off without damage. Yeah, let me get those cut. Let's hold it up. Hold that wheel, because they often feed the crank right through the spokes. And when you're cutting these, make sure not to cut the tire or scratch the rim or the paint of the bike. Careful, so. All right. The crank feds right, right through it. That is a rotor protector. That's a big one. Notice while we're taking this, the materials off of this, we're throwing them away and getting rid of them right away. We're not throwing them on, discarding them on the ground or anything like that. We're trying to keep the area a little bit cleaner, making mm -hmm. sure everything kind of flows along with us and we're not working around ourselves. Another critical phase is coming up, the handlebars. We keep taking stuff off, this is loose, it's gonna ding stuff up. So now uh -oh. we need to think about this and figure this out, how it all goes. So I'm going to swing that the other way. Something of an intelligence test. Hmm, careful. There we are. Paper, plastic please. All right. There we go. Our face plate's got to come off. Let me hold this bar there we for go. you. If you have a helper, it can make a big difference. Sous chef. Sous chef, exactly. Your sometimes sous chef. sous chef is me, sometimes it's trimming. Okay, we have a dry patch here, thread locker. Think we're good? Mm, I'm a sucker for some grease on that. Let's do a little bit then. Stem bolts. Let's be careful here, because we don't want grease inside where the friction is. Mm -hmm. We just want, I'm going to put just a little squirt actually in the hole. Perfect. Same thing, right there. Not where we're clamping. We do not want grease in the friction area. We want grease where the threads are gonna go so that they pull up and get torqued properly, as well as don't get seized in there over time. Because we are doing dealing okay. with two dissimilar metals. Bar me. There we go. We'll get one on the top and get one on the bottom so it's holding. So here we got a clamp. Yeah. With a plate that comes off. We want this clamp even. We don't want. Yep, we're trying to even it up best possible. Well, mm -hmm. we've got it without totally knowing what it's going to be like on the ground, but I think this is going to get us close to where we want to be. All right. How's the spinner on that? On so that much fun. This is so much fun. Oh, New oh, wrench. A little looser on the top there. Right. Yep. I'm going to show them what is bad so they know what is good. Yes. So we end up with a big gap on the bottom. The bolts are actually twisting as we tighten them. So we want it fairly even. I went too much here. So now I got to come down Pretty here. Pretty good. Let's see how we're doing. We can look and we can also feel. I think I'm a little bigger now on the top. I think you're a little, yep. So. That's feeling pretty good. No torque number here. We are centered nicely. We've got on the back here five to six, so I'm gonna assume a similar torque on the okay, front there. Okay, so let's give it a go. Cross as I go, and then down, and then up. I see that there has not been a click from the torque yet. He's taking them up evenly. There we go, first click. Going back to it. If they're gonna run lights, you can remove the reflectors, but if you're gonna mm -hmm. be potentially riding at night and you don't know if you're gonna have lights, leave them on. So now we just threw all the rest of the parts on. Is that how it goes? 
Yeah, exactly. Just wow. throw them at it. <laughs> so, when the bike's more or less level, axle to axle, the bars look reasonable, don't you think? They look pretty good. That's right. But we're also worried about the alignment this way. So, we want to look over that. We're not going to put the front wheel in yet. Not quite yet, no. No. We're not even going to align to the wheel. Yep. Okay, I want to show them how we want to do this. Let's bring this thing down. Yeah, for let's me. make it a little going bit down, easier to down. view. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's hold there, and I'm going to give it a bit of a rotation. So, what we're going to look at is a straight edge, a plain extender. It's going to extend the top of the forks here, right on our, our stanchions. And we're going to compare a parallel line, which is the ruler, to the handlebars. And we're going to see that we are not parallel. Boy, let's have a look down, down from the top and see if we can see that. So why do, why do this now? Because you'll be done, number one. Don't be lazy and think, oh, remember to get to that. You're going to be excited. You're going to jump on the bike. Mm -hmm. If you end up doing it twice, you end up doing it twice. It's better than not at all. That is for sure. So a little more. Parallel, so the bars, ruler, nicely aligned. All right, we are Tighten winning it. now. We didn't grease. Yeah, let's get these out and grease them. One at a time. Do I leave that one there because it's snug? And it's keeping everything in place. Keep it in place. A little grease action there. That's something that's gonna happen. You're gonna drop things. A lot of times the best thing to do when you drop something, stay still and just watch where the sound comes from or watch where it lands. Mm -hmm. Another good reason why we tidied up the floor. Mm -hmm. So snug, now it'll hold the upper one. You wanna spin that upper one and I will just snug that lower one until we get the top one back in. Please. Mm -hmm. And while we're time. here, no headset play, we're good. Spacers are not moving. Let's just, since you mentioned it, underneath this little tap. I think we were in business before. So we are good to go. And when you have a soft joint like this with paired, mm -hmm. see, I got a little bit of torque. Compression on working itself together. Exactly, so double check both of them. And if you get a decent amount of a turn, go back and them, forth. Check them again. You're not gonna over tighten the release and the click. Yeah, those okay. will not let you over torque. Those will not so let you now over there's a lot of different ways that this can be done. That some people I've heard, they'll do alphabetical. They'll go through the bike out. Kind of hard. That seems crazy. Truman, what do you like to do? I'm a front to back guy. I like going, starting in the front of the bike, front wheel, front brake, um, adjusting kind of where some of the cockpit items are, and work my way back, crank stuff like the crank and the pedals, move my way back, do the rear wheel, rear brake, then go on to the shifting, things that, you know, the shifting is a mm -hmm. full, Kind of the whole bike, it's the whole system. How do, you, how do you? I don't do it that way. I do it by component group. Both wheels together. I'm in a wheel frame of mind, wheelie, wheelie, wheelie. Then I'm in a cockpit frame of mind. I'll do bars, stem, do saddle, get all that good cables and housing. Then I'm a drivetrain thinking. Stick with the drivetrain. Good ways? I think these are all great ways. That's right. The, the key is, once you start doing it one way. Learn it. Stay in the rut. That's right, stay on that, stay on that horse. Because what it'll start to develop is muscle memory and you're gonna remember what you did last time and you're gonna remember issues that you had last time and you're gonna start to look and be more observant. You got that phone call and now where was I? I'm always here. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Right. Yeah, and then you can look at, you know, say you get called away for some weird reason or something, you know. You can come back and you have a really good idea about where you left off. Mm -hmm. That's, the, you have to have a system before you go into it. So for today, let's just stick with components because there's two of us. Let's each take a wheel. Let's do this. Front or rear? I'll take the rear. Okay. This is going to be an interesting one. All right, I got the front. So on the build, part of this is a judgment call on how crazy you want to get. So, yeah, Pat's a good friend, but do we want to take off, hmm, tires and tubes? Do we want to look down inside the rim strip, inspect the engagement of each spoke nipple? No. Yeah, Pat's not that good a friend. So, yeah. we're going to do a safe assembly. But there's certainly things that eh, you could put off till, till later. We don't think there's a problem with the rim strip inside until we see something. But I have a problem right here. Oof, ah, I'm building my finger strength by turning, turn that axle. That one's tight. That Those one's tight. bearings are gonna be worn out Very, pretty quick. Pretty quick, the Very surfaces quick. are gonna be trashed. But oddly, I'm not gonna do that now. I want to get it true get the wheel true, then I'll adjust that last. How so, about give this one a whirl? Better. Better? We're I'll not all the way there, better. but I'm, I'm, I'm honestly impressed that it came that at close. least close to where close. we're gonna be wanting yeah, to be. so the front one. Uh, in addition, it's fine here. You put the skewer on this one, ooh, it's gonna feel terrible. That one will, yeah, with the skewer on that one, it'll change that quite a bit. Yeah. First thing we're gonna do is just give this a spin, see what kind of shape it's in. Not terrible, terrible. A little bit of movement here, we got some wobble. I'm gonna go and just give a quick squeeze. That's important. These all actually feel pretty snug. If one was crazy loose and we had that big movement, there might be a bent rim, but we don't think so. Thinking it's, it's just some trueness issue here. Gonna come along here, the reflector out of the way. So here a little tighten and a little loosen. Oh, I took care of that one. How good does this need to be? The braking, it's not here. If this were a rim brake, we'd wanna do a little bit better. It's a rotor, so we're not worried about it uh, for that. We don't want it to hit the, the uh, fork, but we also want it to look good for Pat. So a little tighten and a little loosen in this case. And that's looking pretty good. Boy, it looks nice. That's gonna be good. Next, again, if, put the reflector back. A lot of experience, you can get a sense here. I'm gonna say these are probably pretty good. A spoke tensiometer can come in, give us a deflection. We can check out our chart and determine how tight they really are, if it's good enough. So that one's looking bad, looking, looking not bad. So here on our friend, the WH-1, we have the rear wheel. The rear hub, this is a bolt-on axle. When we were just feeling this, we noticed it felt a little tight. These with a solid axle, how you adjust those is you bring it up just so it feels right, just so there's no play. Uh, it's a little bit different with the front axle. We'll go through that in a second. But for this one, what I'm gonna do is adjust the cone and that lock nut that's on the non-drive side. The drive side is impossible to get to with the freewheel installed. So we're gonna do it all from the non-drive side here. So first, Typically, the size of that inner cone is a 15, and the outer is a 17. You can either, for this, for the outside, you can either use a you know, standard combination wrench like this, or you can use a cone wrench, one of our SCWs. And just loosen it, got it loose, and I'm just gonna move that probably a quarter of a turn, snug that back down. I'm gonna put my finger here, feel that there's play. Look, if you look down here, you can see the play, that movement that's happening. So we wanna get rid of that movement. We were pretty close to being adjusted. So, so 
That's pretty close. I'm gonna give it a final tight. Put these down. Get us out of the WH-1. Still feeling a little rough. Reduce a little bit. All right. So, at some point, you gotta know what you're working with. And with this wheel, this is the best that I can do. There's a little bit of grit to it. You can kind of almost see it when you're looking at it. But if I go any looser, there's gonna be play. If I go any tighter, it's gonna be really bindy. Well, Truman, as we ride that, what's gonna happen? It's gonna settle in. Things are gonna settle in. They're gonna wear to each other. This set of balls are gonna wear to this race and this cone. So it's gonna get a little smoother over time. Mm -hmm. Ride the bike. Ride it. What well, about yours, Calvin? Well, got to do the quick release here. So step one, I'm going to cut this tag off. And this is one of those little warning, 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 warning on this side. We'll give this to Pat. So hold on to that. I'm going to throw the skewer in here. And the skewer goes all the way through. And we're going to take it out of the chewing stand, over to the WH-1. So very common on this type of, of system, when you close this, this cam down, you can see that that moves over, it's pulling on that, that shaft, it's gonna squish, squish together uh, on the cone, it's gonna flex it just a little bit. So we are actually too tight here. And we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna put it with the skewer inside, and this is gonna be actually like I'm riding the bike, it's gonna compress it. So I'm gonna close tightly, just like I was riding. Squeezed it tighter. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually even tighter than we saw before. So very similar concept. Do we have a 17 there, do we? Or is it? it is a 17. A. And then just, uh -huh. just a quick note before we get going too far. So on the on the solid axle, so on this one, that that axle is slightly elastic and compresses because it's a steel axle. The solid axle, we didn't quite go over it on that one, but it, it pinches on each side and then the center is relaxed mm -hmm. and then pinches on the other side. So it's it's pinching the dropout on each side individually. Mm -hmm. That's how I Probably my best way of describing it, it is. I guess. That's, that's true, that's true. Different technique for each. So here, this is where the cone wrench is. I'm gonna try and remember that. Oh, this is a good one. My 17, no fit. No fit. But wow. my sous chef is, yeah, I mean, you got it for me. I'm telling you. Get yourself a good sous chef. Oh, there you go. So I'm gonna break free the lock nut. This hand is not moved, so I'm gonna come a little bit looser. Stop. I'm gonna lock down the adjustment so the cone is backed away. I'm gonna test for some bearing play here by giving it a little wiggle. I'm gonna open that up and see if there's... Nope, no bearing play yet. So we're gonna try a little bit looser. So remember the wrench is now here. Break the lock nut free. This one's gonna go a little bit, stop. A little bit and stop. This is gonna make it a safer bike. It's gonna make it a bike's more fun to use. And it's gonna make it last a lot longer. Yeah. Let's see what we get here. Oh boy, is that nicer. That's gonna be a lot, a lot nicer. There's a teensy, teensy bit of play. We get a little, little bit of knocking here, but when it's in the bike and that is closed tight, it goes away. So it's longer lasting. That's why this is nice to do. Type of thing your good bike shop will do for you. One thing that we do like to do here is a little drop. Give me a little, uh, little dribble of oil. 
this cam, it's new now, but mm -hmm. as it gets older and dry and used, a little oil in the cam mechanism, that's gonna make things good. It's gonna close properly tight. So while we're here, something else, we're not gonna worry about inside. How about those bolts? Yeah, we should torque those bolts, those, make sure those rudder right. bolts are that's good to right. go. So something loose here, it's gonna jiggle, it's not so much fun. Tight rotor bolts, safety issue. And that's the, going back to what we talked about earlier. Somebody may have already put these bolts in for us and we trust them, maybe, but we really don't. We have to take responsibility for this. So right. we're gonna go and make sure all the nuts and bolts we're are We're confirming tight. they did good work. They do good work. So far. We a bit of turn on one. And the rear. Pretty good. Yeah, let's say double so. check that rear. We got a little turn there. That one was tight. Tight. Little turn there. Little turn there. All right. We're back in business. We're in business now with the rear as well. Let's leave that flipped over and let's talk about what we have here. So this is a, a cassette or a free wheel. We look inside. Look at the fittings here. This one's this one's good. This one's great. So when you're looking at this, this right here, those tool fittings are moving. But inside those mm -hmm. are tool fittings that are not moving. Look for the ones at the innermost, down deep. That's where you can see it. So mm -hmm. this we know is a freewheel. FR 1.3 would work to remove it. Uh, if it was Should a, we remove it? We've got the famous. This one, that's a good question. I, it's so. Pat, do we. It's practically the same size. This one I don't think is doing a lot of good. I don't think it's doing too much. It'll start making noise over time. That's it's right. One of those styles. We're not in the shop for Pat. Yeah, a lot of times people will leave these on for liabilities purposes. Because the, the factory does. Off. The factory does. Let's take it off. Okay. All right, first thing we're gonna get back into is we're gonna put this rear wheel in. Helps to pull the rear, the cage of the rear derailleur down, the body of the derailleur back, feed it onto the lowest, feed the chain onto the lowest, the smallest sprocket, feed it in, watch the rotor go into the brake. Now on this one is a bolt-on, so we gotta watch where these washers are. Mm -hmm. And I'm holding it with my leg here. So I've got pressure coming up. I'm gonna snug this side and actually push this side up into the dropout by just levering the wheel a little bit. And that makes sure that it's in the dropout the entire way. I like to do that because when things are not seated correctly, nothing works out from there. All right. So you got, got the wheel, wheel on, it's tight, or is it, Truman? Let's torque them down. You didn't know there'd be a TW 6.2. Let's see. It's at least the minimum torque. Are Look they stripped? That. No. No. If they're not stripped and they're the minimum torque, all is smooth and nice. Oh, and winning. Too. Okay. The cranks is another one I think is important. Again, we didn't check certain things, but here, the cranks should be tight. For sure. Right. We didn't quite, we didn't check the bottom bracket adjustment, but it feels, feels okay. Right, let's pull now, those caps. Pull these caps off. I'm just gonna pop those off, with a little knife action. There's one. And these crank bolts are what we're gonna torque. These are important because if these start to get loose and it starts to wallow on the taper, it'll ruin your crank and you'll have to get a new one and it's not fun. 
and the test is coming up. So here, I'm gonna get some good leverage and see what we get. Nice. Ooh. And this side. Good and well worth doing. Notice where he held his hand on the torque wrench. Here. On the handle, right where it should be. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so racers like the dust caps out. I it's a we want them It's on. a gift, okay. We it's a classy one. On. There we go. Pop those in there, keep the dust out. Maybe make it look a little bit better. What do you think, pedals? Pedals to shift the gear, we need the pedals. Pedals go in with threads, and threads mean... Grease. Grease. So, we could put grease here. Yep. I think we're gonna put grease in there. So, as a lot of you know, pedals are right hand thread on the right hand side and left hand thread on the left hand side. You can do that by looking at them, and the right hand will go uphill to the right, and the left will go uphill to the left. So these ones happen to be labeled R and L. They also happen to be labeled right here, R and L. But if all those didn't work out, we've got these hash marks. This hash mark is the non-drive side. Those are some indications on how to tell which one is right and which one is left. I am gonna do mine. We're gonna do the old... The old double. The old double whammy. We're gonna pedal backwards and install both at the same time. The and beauty of having right and left hand threads. Oh, buddy. And tight here. Tight here. Look at the time we just saved. You said seconds. Man. You start adding those up. Marginal gains, certain. man. Marginal gains. It's where it's at. Now, let's see if it shifts the gears. Yeah, we got a brake rubbing, but we're gonna we're gonna hit the brakes last on this one. These gears, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think they're gonna be very good out of the gate. Oh. <laughs> there's, a, is... there's a couple things jumping out at us. There's a couple things that are jumping out at us that say, hey, we, sh should we even run through them before doing stuff? Well, let's see what happens. All right, let's shift. All right, rear. One click, no movement, two click, it's there. A little noise. We got it's, some issues. It's not bad, we're jumping around a little bit. We got, we, we got all the, it's fun, because there's sixth, or there's first, fifth, fourth, third. Oh boy. It's very unpredictable. Well, let's just see if it's the indexing. We'll try that first. All right. Well, let's see. I shifted it up. It's not moving. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna thread out this barrel adjuster. Mm -hmm. Give it some false length in the Take housing. Take out the slack, and there it went. We shift up, shift up, 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 up. That's singing my song, Truman. It is making a little noise, maybe a little tighter on that. I don't know, I don't know if it's the limit. So I touched this derailleur, and when I touched this derailleur, I've noticed something. Holy. This derailleur is all over the place. So, let's start by tightening things up and getting us in a, a decent spot to start. It was attached, but not adjusted. So we got some play in there now, but let's go back down to the bottom. That is gonna change your indexing, absolutely. See? There we go. So I got a, I've got a barrel adjust down here and a barrel adjust up here. I'm gonna start using the one up here. So that time it jumped and I still added a, about a quarter turn. It was a little sluggish. Wanted just another hair on it. Now as we go up, it's changing. Rub it a little bit. Here we're testing our limit. Very nice. We're not far off. 
this would be a rideable bike. And in some models and in some cases, that is what you should be happy with. Exactly. What does it look back there? From it doesn't look exactly straight. It doesn't it look exactly straight. It is better, but it lands on the gears. It does. It's not excessively noisy. Rideable. Totally rideable. How much do we like Pat? <laughs> well, let's finish the rest of the bike and we'll see. All right, front of the bike here, we get this little red tab. This, these, there's little teeth on the red, this tab. Yeah. And we can see that those teeth are about eight millimeters too high. These should ma match, these should just go over the, the largest teeth of the largest chain ring. Should just mesh with them. So we, we need to go down like a good solid bit. Here's a good example that we, if we could fit this just like they want it here, my guess is gonna be, we're gonna be running into problems. So sometimes Good. these plates here do not permit you to put it where it really should be. This is true. Let's see what it looks like when we go to that big ring. I think we've got a chunk of space. Maybe we, we can't have a go little, all the way. Right. But now let's also have a look at our weld here. We do have some room to move. Any now we're, here? we're back to that question. What's Pat done for us lately? I don't know. Yeah. It's all, what it's, kind of root beer are we having? That's, I, that's something that you could play with. You could go down a bit. Mm -hmm. But you know, we got other fish to fry, such as. There's other fish. There's discs to fish. There's all kinds of stuff. And it's, this is shifting okay. Does it shift over? Is it gonna come off the cranks? I like working my way up there. So yeah, we're gonna overshift on this one. We would definitely go that way. So we're gonna hit that high limit in quite a bit. Yep, all the turns. We're good. I'm gonna leave the sticker on for now. We might come back, readjust that later. So, just so you know, we might come back, lower this down later. Mm -hmm. I think this would totally get you out the doors. It's gonna get you out riding. It's not really gonna wear anything out. It's gonna be fine. But it's gonna wear on my insides, leaving it like this. <laughs> really will. <laughs> so, should we go back to the front? Front I'll take wheel. the front, you take the rear. We're All looking right. at disc brakes. All right, we're on to the next thing. We're gonna adjust the brakes. We're gonna, this is gonna be a team activity in this case. I'm gonna loosen these adjustment bolts back here on the caliper right here and here. Um, I've got these loose. I'm gonna have Calvin grab a handful of the rear brake. You ready? I am ready. Squeeze in the rear. I'm just gonna move it around, get it to settle down a little bit where it, sh it wants to go. And I'm just gonna snug these and just a little bit back and forth. Because if you torque one down and it hasn't kind of found its home yet, it's gonna move the caliper. It's gonna squeeze it over almost. So I like to go up with them pretty evenly. All right, release the, release the brake, Calvin. Releasing the brake. And we win. Smooth and good? We're smooth and good. We're not hitting at all. That rotor is pretty straight. Right. <laughs> I'm surprised. I don't know why, but it's a very straight rotor. We're not hitting anything. It's tight. I think the rear brake is done. How's the front looking, Calvin? Well, on the front, I put the, uh, the wheel in, I lifted it up, I made the mistake of touching the reflector, which just blew apart on me. Oh no. So, Pat, I'm sorry. Now we want to do a similar thing in the front. So we definitely have a brake rub. 
So I'm gonna to come to the back. We're going to loosen. And we're going to loosen. So the caliper is gonna be all floppy. We want that. Give me some squeeze action there, please. So the caliper is gonna to move to the rotor like it should be. And then just a snug and a snug. Gonna do one more snug so it doesn't walk its way around. And sometimes you gotta do some adjusting even with this. Ooh, good That's indication. Much, much better, much better, but we do have a, a rub, a rub. And sighting straight down from the top, this inner pad is rubbing. So we have a gap on the outside, so it needs to scooch over just a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna loosen the front one and shove it just a wee bit. Come to the bottom one. And see if we got anything. Getting closer. More. And with luck, we have not run out of adjustment. That one's being a little bit of a bear. The good news is I overshot. So I think there is a happy medium. And this, this can take a little bit of time, that's true. And sometimes if the pads are crooked, you don't really have an adjustment. This is a two-dimensional adjustment. So if we're getting a, okay, now. Goldilocks, right Now, there. yep, and we definitely have a little bit of a movement in the rotor, even though it's tight. Adjustments uh, not rubbing, we're good, but there can be times that these need facing, a machining process. It's become, it seems to be becoming Back around, we need to face these more and more often. Yes, that's right. So, that's looking good there. We're looking uh, decent on the shifting. Is it ready? Should we call Pat? I don't think we can call Pat yet. We don't have air in the tires. Coming up. We're gonna go, hmm, air pressure. Nice and soft for good riding. It's kind of snowy out there, I think. 30 something. Yeah, 30. but for this, the first ride especially, let's go firm. It's also nice to actually over inflate and see if our seating's nice, mm -hmm. and it is. Then we can bleed down to what we like. Down, down, down. There's our 30. We'll clean this up oh. with some cleaner afterwards so there's no adhesive bind. Over and plate here. Seating quite nice. Down to 30. It's a very nice accessory here we need to check on. I want to see that these bolts are nice and tight. That's good. No creaking. No creaking. Don't need any grease in there. I was, I was eyeing that one up a little earlier. So That's like, right. So we're ready we need, to bring it down? I think we're ready to bring it down. There's one more little touch I'd like to do for Pat because we built it for him. Oh. Is this what you're thinking? Yep. <laughs> you gotta have a little blue touch on here. Keep the bars straight. Now what we do, spin the wheel. I'll tell you when we're gonna stop. Stop. There you go. Off. Perfect. Crooked? Oh, very. Better. That's the ticket. Ah, it doesn't twist. It's good. But you remember we did torque, we tightened this. This looks to be pretty level. Maybe mm -hmm. I think that's pretty good. I agree. What about these? 
Sure, that's where they want them. That's right where they want them. I don't think so. Imagine, I don't. Imagine you're riding this and your hands are like this. You got so much control. Mm -hmm. No, we want more like this. So we've got to lower these quite Four a ways. Four millimeter, they got it. I've got this one. So first thing, you're gonna to have to uh, loosen the shifter. And then a lever. And Pat is just happens to be getting how I would set up my bars. I like them in a little bit. Mm -hmm. You don't want those levers smashing into your hands. Yep, it's two finger braking, you're out on there, you got a good amount of leverage. Here's one that, that I always struggle with. The shifter is hitting my thumbs. So not everybody has that issue, but mine are swollen from that issue. So I like to move my shifter in. You can always move your fingers to get to the shifter when you need to. That's when they need to ride the bike and come back to see us. Exactly. So we're just gonna match the sides. What happened with that housing, that cable, Calvin? There are some issues here. Yeah. If that was a bit better friend, <laughs> <laughs> or we wanted to spend the time, there are some changes that we would want to do. Yep. We're gonna have to make one, but not too much. Yeah. So some things that uh, we may want to, to look at for the user after a couple of uses, height, of the bars. Yep. Make sure Here. you're where you want to be, where a place where you want to make that amount of power. We are stacked up underneath. You could go down. You're not going up. No, nope. not unless you get a different stem. Mm -hmm. Headset adjustment's pretty good. All right. Now the housing, let's look at the, first the brake. So this front brake, it doesn't really affect the performance here with the hydraulic, but how's that, how's that length? It's a little excessive, or a little we need more. to get it, we need to move it so it's going in the right direction. So there's a, you could clip it there. Mm -hmm. I would almost think about routing it inside. Right. Coming and around up. here and up and around. Right. A reroute, a reroute would be good. Or, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. play with it to see right. where it's going to end up. This is going to be fine though. The rear isn't, isn't so bad. But do we get a, do we get 90 degrees out of it? We get 90 degrees. We do. If you get in a crash and it keeps going, you might run into good. some problems. But these shifters are not my favorite. You see it, it's really common. So let's follow the housing, the rear shifter here, to here, to here. So this is a classic case here. I think we could do a little improvement. I think it would look a lot slicker if this rear brake, you notice this rear brake comes all the way across and down if this one made the same and came over here, it would look a lot cleaner. They would follow the same lines. Right. It would make a smoother transition yeah. for that shape. And it's not just off. because we're artists, the artists that we are. There's also a good functional reason. First, let's follow this here. It's going to be rubbing right here. So that's going to ride a whole lot here. It's going to rub. It's going to be not just paint, but you can actually lose some aluminum. Uh, you can put a dent in here and here. So crossing it over to this side, it's a nicer swoop. It's a, it's a smoother transition. Mm -hmm. The left side should also go to the right. Well, if you cross once, you gotta do it twice. Yep, some bikes are designed, so if you have, so this one we can, I think we could totally make it happen. Just we switch, could. Though, switch locations here. That's right. So the the if the front's going to go here, we're going to take this. We're going to loop it down here, and the rear would come and come down here. So yeah. you would cross it here, and cross it here. You think we're going to be good? Yeah, we'd be back in business. Yeah, and no rubbing, no rubbing the frame, no rubbing the fork. Yeah, but I think I think this is you know fairly ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, the first ride, question. the first ride, no, not by Pat. Pat. Pat doesn't get the first ride. Well, Pat does get the first ride. We are on a mission when we're riding this bike. We are gonna need to go ride this bike to verify that it functions, to verify that there's nothing completely wrong, to, to bed in and burn in the brakes. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's important for the person who built the bike to go and experience it so they can really tell what is right and what is wrong mm -hmm. and if they need to go revisit something. And have that feedback for the user when they come, I know what you meant, I felt that. And if there's something really bad and, and Truman's gonna get hurt, well, it's better Truman than Pat. Exactly. So if you forgot something, you'll find out very quickly. Yes. All right, you wanna take it out for the initial run, Calvin? I'm gonna go get a brain bucket and go do it. All right, Calvin, how did it ride? Great, clearly a bike assembled with love. Yeah, I think it's, it came out pretty good. Well, Truman, that is a wrap. Awesome, a beautiful bike. Happy holidays from us here at Park Tool, and we'll see you next year on Tech, Tech Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy Tech Tuesdays, check out our Repair Help video library, which has detailed guides to a wide variety of common bike maintenance procedures. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos from Park Tool.